Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about winglets. Why are there so many types of them? Why do they look like they do? What is the purpose of them? So uh, stay tuned. Hi guys, so today we are going to be talking about winglets and the first thing I'm going to say, if you stay tuned, uh, I have a question for you, okay? So I want you to write in your answer in the, uh, in the uh, comments below now, before the end of the video. How high do you think a 737 winglet is compared to me? Alright, write in your answer right now, okay? This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a website that will help you fine-tune and perfect your math skills and your physics skills, which is something you might well need before your pilot interview. Check out the link below. Right guys, so winglets, what are they? Well, first of all, if you've been traveling as a passenger, you probably have noticed if you've been flying on more modern aircraft recently, that if you look out to the wing, you'll see that the wing tip tends to be kind of curved upwards. Now, they look different on different aircraft types. So if you've been flying, for example, on an Airbus 320 of an older model, you would have seen the very simple kind of uh, wingtip fence type that they had. If you've been flying on a 737 new generation, you would have seen the sharklet, which basically looks like a, like a shark fin sticking up. And on the very new 737 Max, we have something called a split scimitar winglet. Okay, now they all work from the same type of principle and it all, the reason that they came in the first place was in order to find that out you have to go back a little bit in history which I have a tendency to do. So um, the first types of 737s they did not have any winglets at all. Okay, the 77 100 and 200 did not have any winglets and could not be retrofitted with winglets either. Uh, but they were made in the 60s and in the mid 70s due, due to some geopolitical crisis the fuel price suddenly started rising, the oil price started rising and with that the aircraft manufacturers started looking into how to make their aircraft more efficient, more fuel efficient. Now um, Boeing, they turned to NASA and specifically to a NASA engineer called Richard Whitcomb now Richard Whitcomb, he had been looking at ways that the birds were flying and he was specifically looking into how eagles were flying. And he noticed that the, uh, the feathers on the wingtips of the uh, eagles tended to bend upwards as they were soaring. Okay? And he wondered why that was. Um, so what he looked into is how an, a, a wing is creating lift in the first place. Now, in order to understand this, you have to understand that as a wing uh, is taking out lift, the more lift it's taking out is normally because it's angled towards the oncoming wind and also because of the shape of the wing. Now, as it takes more lift out, what it does is it's creating a high pressure on the lower part of the wing and a low pr pressure on the top part of the wing. Now, whenever you have that happening in nature, whenever there's a difference in pressure, the nature will always try to equalize that pressure difference. So what happens in the case of a wing is that air tries to escape from the lower part of the wing to the top part of the wing. And that happens at the wing tips. Now that creates big vortices. Now you might have seen these vortices if you've seen aircraft landing when it's really moist outside. You can actually see these wing tip vortices happen. And when a vortex is, is created, it actually steals energy away from the aircraft and it reduces the lift that the aircraft can take out. So Richard Whitcomb started looking into ways to solve this and what he came up with was let's do like the eagles. Nature has have a tendency to do things in the most efficient way possible. So he created a kind of a fence, which is what a winglet essentially is. All right? So he bent the wingtips up and notice quite quickly that you get a much higher efficiency out of the wings while doing that. So anyway, there are different ways of doing this because the thing is, anytime you add something onto an aircraft, you also add weight. And in the case of a winglet, since you are putting these wing tips, uh, winglets on at the tip of the wings, they're also going to create a little bit of torque, okay? Uh, that will have an effect on the structure structural integrity of the wings. So you have to strengthen the wings and that also costs weight. And this means that 
in order for you to, or in order for the winglets to be efficient, they have to be more efficient than the the this you know the the negative effect that the extra weight has, and and that's this increases with the length of the flight. Okay, so if you're doing really short hops uh, with a very short cruise, it means that winglets might not necessarily be of any help but if you're doing longer flight they become more and more efficient uh, and this is what Airbus noticed so on the first uh, Airbus 320s and 319s uh, Airbus basically said well what we're going to do is we're going to fit this really really simple um, wingtip kind of fences right you might have seen them which are really just a very very simple piece of plastic that is stopping some of the wind vortexes from happening because we want to save on weight and we don't think that this is going to be efficient but as they went into the, the um, Airbus 320 NEOs they actually found ways of reducing the overall weight of the aircraft and by doing so they could fit the very similar sharklets to their Airbuses which would also increase the overall efficiency now, if you then go into the 737 MAX series, they have something called a split scimitar. So, the efficiency that you get out of a normal sharklet, okay, is on a, on a flight that's about 500 nautical miles, you will gain about 1% of efficiency. On a flight that is about 3,000 nautical miles, you will gain as much as 3.5, 4, maybe 4.5% efficiency. Now, the split scimitars works exactly the same, they're just stopping the air from escaping both on the top and the bottom side and according to Boeing it, it increases the overall efficiency of the aircraft with another one and a half percent and it adds about 65 nautical miles to the range and that's very very important because as you might have seen the low-cost carriers are now trans you know flying over the Atlantic with 737s they couldn't do that before and it has partially to do with these new winglets other benefits that you get from winglets is as the aircraft gets less drag and gets more efficient it means that for example during takeoff they can use less thrust and when you're using less thrust during takeoff it's less noise there's less pollution and there's also a lower maintenance interval on the engines so the saving is not only on fuel burn but it's also on maintenance intervals noise punitive um, costs things like that so there are many 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 uh, benefits from increasing the efficiency and the winglets is part of that solution. Now you might ask yourself, okay, so if these winglets are so fantastic, why aren't they fitted, for example, to the 787, which is the most um, new and most efficient aircraft in the Boeing family? Well, when it came to the 787, Boeing actually looked into the 767 wings and the 767 wing has something called a raked wingtip. That means that the tip of the wing is, is kind of angled slightly backwards and slightly upward. And what they found out that if you're flying really long haul flights, as in ultra long haul flights, the rate wing tip is actually even more effective um, on the overall fuel burn than a fitted winglet would be. Now the um, Airbus 350 has these new winglets, okay? So you've seen them, they're very, very peculiar, they're very curved. Um, so they have chosen to go with winglets on their model. So that leads me to believe that it is possible that the difference between these two wings probably is not that big, okay? Because they are so efficient now that they're, they're probably, you know, closing in on what is possible to do aerodynamically. Anyway, so that's what I had to say about winglets. I hope that makes a little bit more sense to you now. And um, as always, guys, make sure that you get the Mentor Aviation app, right? Mentor Aviation app is available here. If you just go down and you click the links, both for Android and for iOS, you can get the app. It's completely for free. And you can talk to me and you can talk to other aviation enthusiasts and you can watch videos about aviation. It's, it's a lot of great people in there that are just dying to, to talk to you guys. Um, I want you to check out my sponsor and the brilliant.org if you go in here and you click this link below uh, you'll be able to go in and you they actually make it quite fun to learn maths and physics and it might be good for you to do before you go for your flight school interview now I did um, promise you to show you the difference in height and height, uh, you know if you uh, put me up next to a 737 sharklet so 
here it is. This is the answer to your question. Now, be honest, is it bigger or smaller than you thought it would be? That's what I thought. Guys, I'm going to continue to uh, do this series on, particular, on peculiar things on the 737. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned. And uh, I'll, um, just to show to you, by the way, that this is not the green screen, I'm going to be running into the distance now. So see you next week, guys. Bye-bye.